Welcome back to Engineering Simplified. In this video, we are going to talk about the inverse kinematics of a robotic wrist. But what is a robotic wrist and what is inverse kinematics? So let me deal with them one by one. Here I have a six degree of freedom robot and I have to figure out what a robotic wrist is. So robotic wrist is nothing more than the last three intersecting axes of a robot. That sounds difficult, right? Let me break it down. So this is my one of the, the intersecting axis of the robot, which is theta four. So the robot can rotate about this axis. So there is going to be a motor which rotates about this. So there is this theta four, and then there is another rotation which can take place about this axis, which I have called theta five. And then there is another axis of rotation theta six. So, so I can see that going from the end effector towards the base, these three are the last rotation axes. And if I try to bring them to a point, I can see that right about here, they intersect, right? So a robotic wrist is where the last three rotation axes intersect of a robot. That is what a robotic wrist is. So more formally, it is the last three intersecting axes of the robot, and that is what a robotic wrist is. To give you a slightly better idea of how the robot would move when we change these parameters, uh, let me show you a small video. So here, I am changing one of the parameters at a time. Right now, I am just changing theta 6 while keeping theta 4 and theta 5 constant. Now, I am just changing theta 4 with theta 5 and theta 6 constant. And then I would just change theta 5 and keep the other two thetas being constant. So now the question is, what is inverse kinematics? But before we answer that, we need just a recap of the previous video that the robotic wrist is responsible for just the orientation of the end effector. So the, the last three intersecting axes, these do not define where the end effector is going to be as in the position, they only define the orientation of the end effector. So just keep that in mind. And now what is the inverse kinematics of robotic wrist? It is basically to determine the wrist parameters, which in this case are my theta four, theta five and theta six, that plays the end effector at the desired orientation. Again, notice the word orientation because we are talking about the robotic wrist, which is the last three axes, and these are only responsible for the orientation. And for this robot, the first three axes of rotation would be responsible for the position and the last three are going to be responsible for the orientation. Similarly, if it was, let's say a seven degree of freedom robot, so the last three axes are always going to be responsible for the orientation and all the axes before the last three are going to be responsible for the position. Let me keep this video short and in the next video, we are going to do a numerical example as to how do we actually do the inverse kinematics of a robotic wrist numerically and how do we find the solutions and what do those solutions represent. So see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.